I'm posting on Reddit as my last resort. Trust me. If I had somewhere safe to turn to, I'd be there. But not even the authorities can help me at this point. I'm Nate. I live in a small, conserved town on the countryside, with basic human needs such as a school, a hospital, grocery store, and some other locally owned shops. It's a nice, simple town, and that's what makes the crime rate in here very low. I think the last time I saw a crime here is when someone at my school put a plastic bottle in the compost. If a real crime ever occurred around here, I swear, the news would be all over it. But recently, a few strange occurrences have happened, and when I say strange, I mean borderline insane. I have a small group of friends I've known since I was little. We're all in high school now. Actually, scratch that. I'm in high school. Anyway, I have four close friends who all have different personalities. Our friendship sits on thin ice, considering our differences, and that's also what ties us together. There's Riley, who finds almost anything and everything funny. He is always there to cheer me up. There's Spencer. He's really laid back, and when he has energy, he uses it to be creative. He has amazing works of art that he's shown me, and honestly, he leaves me in awe every time. Unfortunately, his strict parents found out about his ability and made him refrain from drawing at the house and spend his time on more useful things. It's really sad that he has an amazing hobby taken away from him, then again, he was never really close with his parents, as they neglected him, and when they paid attention, it was because they wanted to discipline him or correct him on whatever he wasn't doing perfect. There's Mason. He was very shy and introverted towards everyone he knew at first, because of trauma caused by his abusive uncle. But me and my other friends helped him get out of his shell. When he was seven, his parents got run over by a drunk driver and died in the hospital. The uncle was the only one to take custody of Mason, which is very unlucky because he was the only one in the family with major drinking problems and paranoia. The stories Mason has told me about his uncle and him are extremely shocking and make me feel lucky I have a proper family. It makes me wish Mason lived with me. And then there's me. I can't really describe myself. In one word, I'd call myself serious. I wouldn't say smart, but just serious. My four friends and I eat at the same lunch table every time we eat, the one nearest to the left window aisle. A few months ago, Riley decided to carve his initials into the lunch table as a declaration of territory, or whatever he called it. And surprisingly, no one rejected that idea, so he stuck with it. That day, Spencer seemed jumpy. I later on confronted him and asked him what was wrong after the bell rang. And the response he gave me wasn't normal for him to say. He blurted out, Dude, you haven't heard? Heard what? I jokingly asked. The crop fields. There was a news article about someone dying near the crop fields. Bullshit, man. Even if it's true, why are you getting all obsessed about it? I started to drop from unconvinced to concerned as I asked this question. I began to get worried. He looked like some kind of drug addict. When's the last time you saw someone die around this town, Nate? Yeah, that's right, never. He rushed out his words. I could tell he was about to explode. Did he know the person who died? Was he worried it happened to him? He wasn't one to let things get to him. Yeah, well, death happens, doesn't it? What are we going to do? I became more concerned about why he was so obsessed with someone he didn't even know dying. 
We heard footsteps coming from the hallway ahead of us. I forgot lunch was over, and it was time to go for our separate classes. I gotta go. Spencer spun around and ran away. With no evidence, he was even there. No evidence. I didn't get a chance to talk to him at the end of the day. I guessed he went home early, or he was still at school, and so I brushed it off. I shouldn't have brushed it off, because that would be the last time I spoke to him ever again. The next day, my three friends were staying outside the school as usual. Except there's only two this time. Spencer wasn't there. Yo, did you see what was up with Spencer yesterday? He was acting super weird. I lowered my eyebrows and asked. Hmm, yeah. Maybe he was sick or whatever. That's probably why he's not here today. Riley shrugged and spoke in his low-toned voice. That didn't sound wrong, but it didn't sound completely correct either. Didn't Spencer talk about the death he saw in the newspaper? Or am I the only one? We had a normal school day, taking boring classes, eating at the same table without Spencer, and then going home. During break, not only my friend group seemed quiet, but the whole cafeteria. I guessed it'd be ear exploding to hear annoying teenagers yell and make dumb jokes for everyone to hear, but today, I was wrong. The next day wasn't normal. When I got to school, Mason and Riley were standing huddled together, looking side to side for me. And when they saw me, they began to run towards me. Whoa, what's with you guys? Are you sick like Spencer? I backed away. Spencer isn't sick, Mason muttered. What is that supposed to mean, Mason? Where is he then? I got annoyed with Mason's unconstructed response. He's dead. Riley took over the conversation. Ah ha ha, very funny man. I get you're trying to be funny like always, but that's too far. I said. This isn't a joke, Nate. Riley said in monotone, as he shoved his phone in my face. I began reading what was on the screen, and started to tremble. It was a news article that was released this morning by some local newspaper company we all knew. Local high school boy found dead near Cropfield. The image beneath the title was an image of Spencer, his cold, dead corpse sitting right beside an abandoned crop field. His body had been untouched, not a single cut or scratch. Same old Spencer. He just looked, well, dead. We all began to cry. Even for us, it was a normal reaction. I mean, wouldn't it be for anybody? So many questions began swirling through my head. Why was he dead? Who did it? Was it targeted? Did he commit suicide? Why all of a sudden? Is there something he was hiding? My thoughts came to a complete stop as the bell rang, and we began to drag ourselves to the entrance. How am I going to go on like this? How are we going to go on like this? The whole day was chaos. Everyone knew Spencer was dead. The police came to question students and teachers about Spencer's death. We had a ceremony in his honor. I knew Spencer always hated having a spotlight on him. I missed him already. The next day came and I had no more willpower left in me to get out of bed. Why should I? Spencer isn't coming back, there's no point. My mom heard the news and tried comforting me as much as possible. She gave me a ride to school, promised me we'd go see a movie after school and do other fun things. I appreciated her help, but 
with what happened next. I don't think a ride to school and seeing a movie would help. I exited the car and said goodbye to my mother as I walked toward the courtyard of the school. There was Riley, but no Mason and no Spencer. He was sitting all alone in a corner crying while everyone ignored him. I walked up to Riley to comfort him, but he didn't exactly like that. I touched his shoulder to make him look up at me, but he snatched my hand away and began to scream. This, this is your fault. Everyone thinks I did it. Me. They all think I murdered them, but I know it was you. You killed them, didn't you? Behind that sly, serious look of yours, you were plotting this all along, weren't you? Are you going to kill me too? Huh? Just do it right now while you're at it. I just barely got him to quiet down as I interrupted his mental breakdown. Everyone, every single person at school was staring at us in shock. They probably thought he did kill them, after what they just heard him say. I just stayed silent and hugged Riley. He knew I didn't kill them, and I knew he didn't kill them. But the pressure and agony of having our lifelong friends die will most likely make you as irrational as Riley was. He began to sob. I don't know what to do, man. We're the only ones left. The police have no evidence, absolutely fucking none. Riley stuttered, a muffled voice from under his hoodie. That brought me back to my last conversation with Spencer. No evidence. He left with no evidence. And I never saw him again. Did he really go to class? After hearing that both Spencer and Mason were dead, my mother offered to let me take a break from school. But I had to decline. I couldn't leave Riley alone. What if he died too? Even though I still saw Riley at school, I still couldn't protect him. The next day, I went to school with very little reason to live. And to my surprise, Riley wasn't there. I started to chuckle. Fuck, they're all gone, I guess. My chuckle became louder. Why can't I just die with them? I felt so useless. Hurry up and kill me! I audibly yelled. I know you're here, shithead. Come and murder me like my friends. Of course, I got no response to that, except the painful, digging glares of students walking around me, trying to avoid me. Why was I not getting murdered? Was I doing something they were not doing? I didn't go to school that day. I ran back home and stayed there, trying to sort out my thoughts. At four o'clock, Riley's sister, Matilda, gave me a call. Hey, have you seen Riley today? She stopped mid-sentence. What about Riley? I questioned. I could hear sounds of rustling and clacking on the other end. What was she doing? Matilda. Then I remembered. The crop field. Riley and his sister, they both lived right next to a crop field. She hung up on me. I dropped the phone and began to sprint to their home. Riley and Matilda lived alone. Riley took care of Matilda all on his own. It was impressive. If you wanted to know, his parents weren't dead. They abandoned him and Matilda. The mother was some hooker who hooked up with many men. And the father was, well, one of those many men. When I arrived at the house, I saw through the window Matilda standing on the sun deck. 
I barged into the house and went towards Matilda to see what she was looking at. Maybe I shouldn't have kept looking, but I couldn't look away. There they were, all three of them. There was a design of some weird satanic symbol, and in that symbol was the bodies of Spencer, Riley, and Mason, along with some severed forest animals. The blood splattered all along their faces like face paint. Their eyes were kept wide open, and they were wearing forced smiles. Spencer's forehead was ripped open along with a cracked skull. Mason's arm skin had been perfectly peeled off of him like potato skins. And Riley's intestines were flopping out of him. One end of his intestines was shoved in his mouth. The other was still inside him. To no surprise, Matilda barfed everywhere, including on me, then fainted. I called the police so they could investigate, but I knew that it wouldn't do anything. As I write this, I realize why I'm not dead. Mason stays away from his uncle when he is home, and whenever his uncle is out drinking, Mason is completely alone. Spencer's parents are workaholics and choose to stay away from Spencer and work instead, so Spencer is left on his own. Riley walks home from school with me every day, but today I didn't get a chance to walk home with him, so that means he was alone. But I have a family of my own. My mom works only twice a week, my sister has soccer only a few times a month, my dad is a freelance photographer, so I'm never alone, really. That's when I heard a knock on my bedroom door. It was my mother. Nate, me and your sisters are going out to get some groceries. We'll be back in half an hour or so, she said. Wait, no, Mom! She shut the door before I could say anything. My father is currently on a business trip, and my mom and sister are out of the house. So that means I'm alone. There's a light outside my window. It's so damn bright. It's like a gate to heaven luring me in. It's not the sun because it's night, and the moon isn't that bright. It's filling up the whole room. I feel like I'm being blinded. I need to go see what it is. I need to have it for myself. The light is so beautiful. It looks like the light is coming from the crop field down the road. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below, and tell me what you thought of this narration. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for updates, and if you'd like to get early videos, shoutouts, and much much more, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Patreon page. It's a place where you can help support my channel while getting awesome rewards in the process, and every pledge helps out a ton, no matter the size. So if you'd like to see all the rewards I offer and consider becoming a patron, it'd mean a ton to me if you'd click the link in the description and just check it out. And don't forget to show some love to the amazingly talented authors who make these narrations possible. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.